So, the reason I decided to do this DIY is it's very common in the freshwater hobby where someone goes, hey, how do I reduce nitrates in my fish tank? And the usual response is A, reduce feeding, B, get plants, or C, you have too much fish in there. Um, the thing is though, in freshwater hobby, it is very common to have fish that don't allow plants in their tank, and the only other way to grow them would be either in a sump or above the tank. And if you're not interested in design like that, then you could have this filter instead. Um, so I think it's a great idea. Um, I have silver dollars, so it's really not possible for me to grow plants inside the tank. So I figured that this would be a great method to reduce nitrates. And right now my tank is pretty lightly stocked, but I may increase that in the future. Either way, um just another method to help reduce nitrates oh i forgot the most basic way to reduce nitrates is water changes but when you're doing water changes when you have to do water changes more than once a week to keep the nitrates at reasonable levels then i think you should um try this out i'd like to point out the, is that i just set this up so i have no idea how effective it is it works basically on the same principles as a deep sand bed so it works in theory, I just don't know how effective this will be, especially on the tank my size. I have this hooked, my nitrate reactor, which is the white one in the bottom, hooked up to my FX6. Now, this is a filter, a canister pre-filter, and it came with three sponges. And two of these are here that I removed and I have the black one which is the finest grade on top this acts as a filter so that the media doesn't get dirty um, I won't recommend uh, opening it more than once a year maybe even less frequently but you want to keep the media clean so bacteria grow on it the fact that the sponge gets dirty isn't really important um, you just want to make sure that it's not completely clogged. That's the only purpose, is to keep this here clean. You want to open this as little as possible. And the only time you're cleaning the sponge is if you find the flow rate is dropping. So how I have this connected to my FX6 is through the utility valve. This is the utility valve. I have it open all the way. The tube runs into the bottom here. Right here of the canister pre-filter. It runs into the bottom right here. And then I have a tube here that runs to into the tank. Um, I'm going to need to change that because the tube could probably fall out and you don't want that. But you're probably going to need to do something like that or something so that it doesn't fall out either way and how the flow goes is it goes in from here goes down into this filter passes through here and exits through this tube in the back around and into the canister filter now the one disadvantage of this is that you it's hard to measure the flow rate um, when you're going to measure the flow rate, the best thing you could do is disconnect this here. And you're basically going to measure the flow rate of the siphon produced from here. So basically you want to pull, pull this out as a siphon and adjust this here to get the right flow rate. I have not done that yet and I'm just guesstimating. So... But you can basically take the tubing out, you'd have a little air gap, and then you could adjust the flow here, and you'll see the flow change within that little air gap right there. You could use that to guesstimate a decent flow rate. As I open this, you're going to see the flow change. So, you can see that? That's when it's almost so fully open. 
And that's when it's mostly closed. And you're gonna want it mostly closed because you want a low flow rate. So, when you're setting this up, when you have everything attached, the first thing you're gonna do is, in order to start the siphon, is you're gonna wanna close the intake valve, okay? When you close the intake valve, the FX6 is gonna start pulling water from here instead. That's gonna basically create a siphon, and the water is gonna come from here into here and go through. Now you're thinking, Oh, that's going to reduce the flow rate through your filter. Actually, no, because you're only adjusting the intake valve only to begin the siphon. After that, you can push it all the way back to max, and you do not change the flow rate within your FX6, as this just add, acts as a second intake rather than um, diverting some of the flow from your filter into this. Now, like I said, with the advantage of not reducing flow, there's also disadvantage of the fact that I can have the uh, extra filter pad on the top. Since it's coming directly from the tank, it doesn't get filtered before it passes through this. If you are using another regular filter or tank, I mean, a regular canister filter with standard tubing, you'd probably have a T valve attached to the output and you can connect it directly to this and then you wouldn't have to have that pre-filter since it's already getting filtered for the, from the canister filter. You could add it just as an extra uh, caution, but you won't need it. So the advantage could also be a disadvantage. You're not reducing the flow through this, but you are um, require a pre-filter in this. Um, so, after you start the siphon, which you're going to just close this off and open it back up, you're going to come across another problem. And that is, you're going to notice that it's not filled with water, it's going to trickle. What you're going to have to do is undo the clamps here and the water, make sure your flow is adjusted to low because it's going to come up really fast if you don't um, adjust the flow very low undo the clamps and the water is actually going to fill up then you're going to put it back on put the clamps back on and it's going to be filled with water and after that you have it completely set up i'm going to release a longer video on the whole process um the only problem is is that the video came out well a lot of the parts came out very if you're running a lot of biomedia in your canister filter you want to remove some of it when you're setting this up and the reason is um, how this filter works is you have your aerobic bacteria the ones that reduce the nitrates the ones that use oxygen at the top those are going to deplete the oxygen as the water goes down um, and you want them to establish at the top so if you remove your, some of your biomedia in your filter, um, you're gonna get more bacteria choosing to live up here rather than in here, which is what you want because you want as much possible bacteria at the top so that you can get as much area that is anaerobic. Um, so in my FX6, if you look at my previous video, the first part, you see that I dedicated my FX6 to sponges and only the bottom tray has biomedia. Now you might ask why do I have biomedia in the FX6 then if I want as much possible up here. And the reason is this is a low flow environment and this is not going to create um, filtration for your whole tank. Um, so there's no way that you're going to be able to reduce all the nitrate and ammonia in this because there's so little flow going through it and you still want biological activity in here and the next thing is because I am going to be washing my sponges and might be washing my sponges in tap water I still want to have biomedia at the bottom 
so it's very easy to uh, clean and I don't have to worry about that when washing sponges I'm turning a ton of flow in through it and I have high quality biomedia at the bottom so I don't need much at all but if you are running a lot of biomedia it might be a good idea to reduce it slowly it's important to reduce it slowly um, because I only have one tray of my FX6 filled with biomedia. And as you know, the FX6 doesn't hold much biomedia at all. So, it's a good idea to do that. I also forgot to mention, the media I'm using in this is Seachem Denitrate. Does the media matter what you use? No. But what you want to choose is a media that's fine in grade. So it's small. But not really small where it's going to get forced through the intake. And which is why you should use Seachem Denitrate. But there's other small media that you could use. Um, I think there's like bio gravel and stuff like that. You just want really small um, bio media rather than large pellets. And you don't want to use ceramic rings for the reason is ceramic rings are designed to allow a lot of water to flow past them and you don't want that you want to be as packed densely as possible not to have um, as much water flowing through it you want it as de packed densely as possible and that is essentially the reactor very simple it's also important to remember that this isn't going to work immediately. It takes time for the bacteria to grow. And it takes longer for denitrifying bacteria to go grow than it takes for nitrifying bacteria to grow. So imagine you got ammonia, ammonia to nitrites to nitrates to nitrogen gas. And as you know, it always starts with the ammonia, which is the first one that gets processed and the nitrate so it takes time for all those bacteria to become established and this one is going to take the longest so it's not going to happen immediately so um, I'm running this Seachem recommends 30 gallons per hour if you're using uh, any biomedia that you like that is small and compressed I also recommend running uh, the recommended amount that Seachem recommends at 30 gallons per hour and then eventually increasing it if you find it necessary. I'm doing a water change right now but um, the last thing I wanted to mention about this is you're most likely going to want to choose this valve to adjust the flow on on your FX6 rather than this one here or the one here and the reason is you're gonna be doing or you should be doing maintenance on your FX6 more frequently than you are on this like I said you want to be doing that once a year or less um, you only do it when you find the flow rate is slowing down because it's clogged that's the only reason why you do maintenance on this but on this you want to be cleaning those filter pads you want to, uh, so you don't have huge nitrates. So I recommend adjusting this one here because you're going to be removing it way less often than this one here. Well, the next thing is I'm assuming that you actually use the utility valve to drain your FX6. However, if you never use the utility valve to drain your FX6, then um, actually the best place to adjust it then would be here because. You could just close this off, disconnect um, this, and you could just take this whole tube with you. Uh, and then you could clean your FX6. The only thing you'd have is this dangling. But either way, it's really up to you. If you use your utility valve to drain your FX6, I recommend adjusting the flow using this valve right here on the top. If you don't use the utility valve to drain your FX6, then I recommend adjusting it here as you could just disconnect this part right here take it off and take the FX6 with you and you would not adjust the flow on your uh, filter so the flow going through it would always be the same